in uh, and uh, uh, sudden burst of folks running out of the building. It was an orderly exit, she said. Folks simply know the routine if they work on Capitol Hill. So certainly we're glad that she is safe. That's the very latest here from 3rd and Pennsylvania. Back to you. Delia, we appreciate it. Certainly a, a tough uh, six, seven months for the people who not only work on Capitol Hill but live there. Uh, but I'm glad that, that she is safe. Uh, just want to give a quick update. U.S. Capitol Police uh, just tweeted not too long ago that they will be holding a news conference at the media staging area shortly. So we'll look uh, to hear from them. No uh, exact time on when they'll be doing that, but we will, of course, uh, keep you posted. We do want to send things over to Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Lashan again. Uh, check back in with, with you. Uh, Bruce, what can you tell us from where you're at now? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, talking about that news conference, I just saw MPD Chief Robert Conti in his vehicle being driven right by this spot, headed towards First and Constitution. So that is an indication that they may be getting ready to do that news conference that you just uh, mentioned, and maybe we can get some definitive information, uh, some official on-the-record information about what is going on in this situation. We are at uh, third and uh, independence. I'm being told the to wrap, so let me just send it back to you. Bruce, uh, the news conference is beginning right now, we're told, so uh, let's listen in, Bruce, Capitol uh, Police. One uh, focus on this uh, during this incident. Around 9.15 this morning, a man in a black pickup truck drove onto the sidewalk in front of the Library of Congress near First and Independence Southeast. We responded to a disturbance call. The driver of the truck told the responding officer on the scene that he had a bomb and what appeared, the officer said, appeared to be a detonator in the man's hand. So we immediately evacuated uh, the nearby buildings. Um, as you all know, the House and Senate are on recess, and, uh, but there's still people working throughout some of the buildings that were nearby this location. Uh, I'm, I don't want to get into the negotiations uh, that are ongoing. I know that uh, some information has, has come out on uh, been live streamed, so I know you all may have some information, but my negotiators are hard at work um, trying to have a peaceful resolution uh, to this incident. Uh, not only do we have uh, U.S. Capitol Police on the scene, but the um, Metropolitan Police Depart Department of Washington, D.C. is with us, the FBI, uh, Washington Field Office, uh, ATF, and of course, uh, D.C. Um, Fire and EMS. So I'll take any questions that you all have. Chief Major, Major can you tell us why he's doing is, this? Is the suspect live streaming hurting your investigation or is it helping your investigation? So the, the, we're trying to get as much information as we can um, to, to find a way to peacefully resolve this. So uh, we are in communication with, uh, with the suspect, uh, but I, I don't want to talk about exactly what we're talking about because the negotiations are ongoing. Chief Major, can you tell us why he's doing this? We don't, we don't know what his uh, motives are at this time. Uh, we don't know a whole lot. We, we do have um, uh, a possible name and identity of the suspect, but we, we don't have much information at all about him at this time. We're going to give periodic uh, updates, and I'm sorry we don't have more information because this really is an ongoing situation, but, um, as, uh, but we'll give you another periodic uh, update shortly. Is there any the That is really a uh, very recently appointed uh, new Capitol Police Chief Thomas Major, a familiar face in the area, having served as chief in uh, Montgomery County and, and also Fairfax County, uh, stepping right into this very active, very volatile scene there. And it seems to me that it, this is going on right now. We just took a moment to come out and say that they are still working this and that they will get back to the media when they have a more you know definitive answer. Um, but they seem to also know this person's identity. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the negotiations are still underway. And if you're just joining too, uh, about 9.15 this morning, they say a black pickup truck drove onto the sidewalk at the Library of Congress. When an officer responded, the individual in that truck uh, said that he had a bomb and said and it, it had what appeared to be a detonator. But of course, they didn't go into any more detail if they have confirmed that there are explosives in that truck at this point. We're going to continue to closely monitor this situation as negotiations are, ne negotiations are still ongoing uh, outside of the Library of Congress there. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay. okay.
so glad when we made that transition. We used to carry all this different stuff. Here in just a couple minutes, we're going to talk weather real quick. It's a hot summer day across Washington, D.C. in the DMV. We've got sunshine as we had expected. We had expect this, expected this to be a hot day and temperatures are already approaching 90 degrees. We'll be there for sure later this afternoon. We'll stay with partly to at times cloudy skies towards late this afternoon. After 7, 8 o'clock, we could see a couple showers and even some thunderstorms get into Metro Washington. So I'm going to time those out here using our future cast to get you through the next few hours. If you're out and about here this afternoon, just staying hydrated will be key as we'll have lots of moisture in the atmosphere that's making it super muggy and temperatures into the 90s. And then we go into the evening hours and we start to see these thunderstorms flare up. There could be some downpours here, which could lead to some isolated flooding issues. Again, central Virginia and areas just south of the, the Beltway, including up to Prince William County. See these downpours getting in towards Culpeper, Haymarket, Manassas, and down through Dale City and Stafford. Nine o'clock, we've got downpours getting into Southern Maryland as well, and some moderate and maybe even some heavy rain into Washington. The rain's starting to stretch farther north, and by the time we get to midnight tonight and overnight tonight, we'll have a good batch of rain across most of the DMV. Looks like a pretty damp night across uh, our region. We wake up to rain in Washington on Friday morning with uh, some isolated embedded heavier downpours. Those are thunderstorms, not severe, but again, areas that see more than uh, an inch or two in the next uh, several hours tonight could end up with some flooding issues and the rain does continue through about midday on Friday before things start to ease Friday afternoon. We'll probably end up with a dry end to your day on Friday. Just got to watch that morning and midday commute heading into tomorrow. Look at the computer forecast here. It's putting down two, three, four inches of rain in a few spots. Uh, Manassas, you could get two to three inches. Same down through Clinton, La Plata, Stafford and even Fredericksburg and even Washington DC could end up with quite a bit of rain to uh, upwards of an inch. Um, tonight and tomorrow. 88 right now in Washington with a uh, heat index of 92. A bit of a breeze too at this hour. Watch for the damp weather starting later this evening. Could impact some of those Thursday evening plans and certainly going to impact some Friday plans. You're going to have to plan around that rain with the best chance for dry weather coming in Friday afternoon and into the evening hours. An isolate shower storm Saturday and turning hotter and mainly dry Sunday with more heat heading into Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday. For now, we'll send it back over to Allison and Marcella. All right, Chester, thank you. And we do want to get back to that breaking news that we're following on Capitol Hill outside the Library of Congress. Uh, negotiations are still ongoing in this bomb threat investigation. Again, outside the Library of Congress, we know that at about 9.15, a black pickup truck drove on the sidewalk. Uh, a man inside told an officer that he had a bomb and uh, had a detonator as well. And so that is the uh, investigation that is happening right now with a lot of law enforcement presence up there. The area is still very much cordoned off uh, while this negotiation continues. Matthew Torres is there, has been reporting uh, live for us all, all morning since this has happened. And Matthew, I'm, I'm also struck by the fact that, of course, this is Washington, so we have plenty of tourists here, and you sort of stumble into what is a very active scene. And I understand that, uh, that you've spoken with some of them. I've been following what's been going on with your social media down there. It's really, the, you know, the tale of two realities. For those of us in D.C. who are used to, to this, and for those from out of town coming in to this uh, sad scene, actually. 
A tale of two realities really is a good way to uh, describe this. I actually took a picture. I posted it on my Twitter. You have a mother with her two young children, and just in front of them is this police officer blocking this heavy scene that we're seeing, at least here to my right, at Third and Independence. We are just going to take you around here to see, to show you what we are seeing. So down this road again, we have the uh, what appears to be the barriers up and the fire trucks just down the road with the police officers on this side. We have the DC police blocking the scene as well. And just to give a traffic update, uh, third to second on both Independence and Constitution Avenue are being blocked by police. And so just around the corner here, we also have more presence of law enforcement. And so it's quieted down just a little bit as far as those tourists and visitors. But people did stumble their way here, actually, just walking around. Uh, one couple actually spoke to said they were trying to get to the Library of Congress. They got tickets to go inside. Obviously, they couldn't go in and so we saw them trickling their way here just one of many people it seems though that no one is really scared they say they're not surprised it's almost like it's a dc thing for them to just see this to be here on this day including two people we met from seattle what is it like to see what's happening here it's just crazy it's it's exciting <laughs> believe it or not i'm not really worrying about it uh, how did you hear about it we saw it. We just drove down here. We're going to visit some museums and saw all the chaos and couldn't find parking because they were rerouting us around and around and around. So then we wanted to come down and see a little bit closer to see what all the action is. It's a little bit overwhelming, but um, it seems like everything's being handled really professionally. A lot has happened near the Capitol this year. Yes. <laughs> to say the least. For you to be here on this day, is that kind of surreal? It is a little bit surreal as cars are coming in with their sirens and unmarked cars. It is, it is a little surreal, but it makes you realize just how protected the DC area is. And she says D.C. would be the wrong place to do something like this with the amount of law enforcement. And you heard those sirens in the background, something that we have been hearing here, at least for the other hour. We're just outside of the Hubert Humphrey building where they did extend this scene to where they have now uh, caution tape just going down this block. Uh, we know for sure at least two buildings were evacuated. The other occupants of the other buildings near the Library of Congress, they've been navigated to another part. But once again, showing you this scene, at least we have this one person just taking a picture of what we are seeing, something that's going to likely happen throughout the day as this investigation continues. We'll send it back to you guys. That's an interesting perspective. Uh, we see it as this emergency and someone from out of town sees it as how protected um, DC is. Matthew, thank you for that. It is interesting, right? It is. Two and realities. It, two realities, yeah. and I think it, I really feel for the people, again, who work on Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. who live there uh, from January 6th to the other incident where, you know, a Capitol Police officer uh, was killed recently, um, and this, and to have those constant threats uh, mm -hmm. against the U.S. Capitol, uh, it is, it's traumatic. Absolutely, it absolutely. Um, again, uh, these negotiations are ongoing as we await another update, um, but Capitol Police taking a moment to brief the press on what is going on right now. And uh, the situation really um, seems to have not changed much from when we first started reporting this, that bomb threat, um, that vehicle not far from the Library of Congress on the, on the sidewalk there, and uh, still trying to communicate with this individual to, uh, to find out the true intentions and hopefully just uh, basically quell all of this, what's going on now and the potential for harm and violence at the Capitol complex. Yeah, and again, a, a very brief update from the uh, Capitol Police Chief there. Uh, and he said he'll continue to update us as the situation evolves. We'll be right back. You were there. Were you there when uh, Billy McKnight was there? Yes. Yeah, he was the chief of the world. He was such a good guy. Huh? Like, then I heard so many bad stories about him. So he went there. Just the TNT did. He was a guy. Yeah, he got the man who But I love him still. He's I just, that's what you hear, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no.
I'm going to go stand in the shade over here. Uh. Hey, thank you. Am I sweating enough? I was going to go stand in the shade over there. It's crazy. How you doing? Okay. It's typical. It's hard to know. Oh, nice. It's hard to ever know when they're going to come to you. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think they should keep three reporters on this all day. Guy, the guy had a bomb. He would have blown it up by now. She's home. I she's, don't. home. she's working. Her company already got bought out by another company, and she got a big raise and a bonus. She, uh, she graduated college? Yeah, or? she graduated from UCLA. Oh, so you're done? I'm done. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. I'm taking your spot here, buddy. The news at noon, we're following uh, breaking news, this uh, bomb threat investigation near the U.S. Capitol. Uh, again, what we know so far, I just want to recap quickly. Around 9.15 this morning, uh, Capitol Police say a man in a black pickup truck uh, drove onto the sidewalk outside Library of Congress, uh, you know, said that he had explosives in his car, and then that is when that investigation kind of began. Whenever you have something like this, I know there's a lot going on yes. on social media, uh, so we do want to bring in Evan Kosloff with our Verify team to kind of break down what we know so far that is true and, and what's false. Yeah, you said it when it comes to breaking news, the Verify team is all about helping to add context and bring you the facts on what's true, what's false, and what's still unknown. So let's start here. We know that there is currently an active bomb threat. We've been talking about it throughout the day and that it's near the Library of Congress. Those are both confirmed to us by the U.S. Capitol Police. We also have verified that both the FBI and the ATF are currently responding alongside Capitol Police. And last, Capitol Police Chief has just confirmed they are currently negotiating with the suspect. So all of those for now, that is what we can confirm is verified. Of course, we're going to continue updating you with all the facts. This is a developing situation, so we're going to keep watch. Marcella, Allison. Marcella. Marcella, um, yeah, it's it's important and it, um, that we have this verified because again, there is so much misinformation at times. So Evan, thank you so much. A lot going on, yeah, yeah. ongoing negotiations uh, still happening uh, outside the U.S. Capitol and we'll be right back.
Welcome back in. We want to quickly recap this breaking news that we've been following uh, this morning into this early afternoon. Around 915 this morning, a black pickup truck drove onto the sidewalk outside the Library of Congress. The driver told uh, the responding officer he had a bomb, potentially a detonator, and so negotiations are still ongoing at this point. Absolutely. We will break for now, but please follow us online and on the air for any developing uh, events in this situation. Have a good afternoon. I, this is the picture that guy says is is the guy, but I'm not. It looks. I mean, it looks like the Library of Congress. It's on the sidewalk, but it looks and it's a black pickup. But, but it looks almost staged. I mean, I'm a little suspicious.